Hi everybody and welcome to another Cycroft episode. So this time it's episode 31 and we start in the Nether Hub which was recently expanded. So here at the top we're running out of terminals for the piston bolts. That's why we expanded the bottom section of the Nether Hub. So we have yeah, some options for future piston bolts. Also we added um, a little dispenser system here. Um, so that will supply us with steak. It's not filled up yet completely, it was done by methods. Um, ender pulse here and two different rocket types. So either flight duration one, which I prefer, or flight duration three, which Rago prefers. So you should be able to get this from the Nether Hub now. Actually, methods already built up the system um, somewhere else, the top section, a few weeks ago. Uh, I think it was in the west corner. Still get lost in the Nether Hub. <laughs> um, must be here, yeah. So it would look like this. Uh, you can take out steak, rockets, and ender pulse, and once the shulker box is empty, then it would dispense a new one. Don't think that's intended, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, yeah, anyway, we're probably gonna get rid of the system and build it up in the yeah, a new, new part of the Nether Hub. Also, in this corner, we have now a switch uh, to activate the wizard mob switch, uh, so to turn mob spawning on and off. And in the other corner right here, we added a nice little overview of our nether fortress, because I think this is a quite nice site. So you can also see parts of the nether. This was the first uh, yeah, wizard skeleton farm, manual wizard skeleton farm, that was built in the first months of the server. We also added some chests for personal storage, so each Cycroft member can claim three double chests here and dump his stuff there. Um, so the outer ring here is mostly reserved for the piston bolts, but actually we have so many options for piston bolts now, uh, probably won't need them ever. So this side here is reserved for different projects. So here I want to build an elevator um, that yeah, connects the top of the nether hub also the part above the bedrock, um, this section here, and we also want to move the armory from the old world to the nether hub. Um, so currently we have it at the guardian farm, we want to move all the armor pieces um, and tools to the nether hub, and we will build a new armory somewhere below it. Um, this part right here even, so the elevator will connect to this one, and also we want to have an elevator really down to the bedrock level, uh, just for some yeah, general purposes like chunk loading grids, etc. So we will have a multi-level elevator, it's going to be part of a, another episode, because I, I'm waiting for 1.12 to use the glazed terracotta blocks for the elevator. Um, yeah, And here also cleared out some space for today's project. Here we want to build a seven segment display with three digits that just displays some information. For example, that's actually what I want to do today. It will display the progress of the quarry. Um, so it will display uh, which layer the quarry is currently working on. I think at the moment we are at layer around 69 or 70, I'm not entirely sure. So display the 69. And every time the layer goes down, uh, the quarry goes down by a layer, then it will send a signal which decrements the score for example from 69 to 68 and so we always know uh, the progress of the quarry and don't even have to go there. Technically I could even display the progress of the quarry in more detail because the quarry chips away one slice after another. So I could send a signal every one to six minutes to display the yeah, progress of the quarry in slices. But I'm a little bit worried about lag. So if a signal comes in every about 20 hours, that's how long it takes for one layer. That's definitely not an issue, but if you have a signal traveling every one to six minutes, then you might get lag spikes if you use the normal instant repeater system, which I definitely plan to use uh, to build a lag-friendly instant repeater system, which is rail-based. It is quite a lot of effort, especially since the core is about three or three and a half thousand blocks in that direction. Um, yeah, so it's I guess too much effort. Um, we actually plan to build another quarry at some point in another, which would be um, yeah, near. The nether hub about 500 blocks in that direction it will also be larger. There we can definitely do that. Don't see, think, don't think that's an issue. But at this time we just do the um, yeah, layer display. 
Okay, so let's start working on that. Let's head to the quarry. So I arrived at the quarry. Quarry was running while nobody's in the server overnight. Let's turn it off and wait the obligatory eight minutes. This is the progress at this point. We reached, I think, Y69. Yeah, that's what I'm standing on. Um, the fortress is also reached now. So sent begins to generate at uh, Y65. So soon we should also get some soul sand. And uh, let's head over to the clock. Okay, here we go. Yeah, let's also check on the items. So each column is about 600,000 items, 2 million, 2.1, yeah, over 2.1 million items so far, so nether bricks. Um, quartz. Nice, 11 shulker uh, boxes of quartz, so that's about 20,000 quartz already, very nice. So, and yeah, now let's connect this to the 7 segment display. Uh, so every time the quarry goes down by layer, this redstone dust line is activated um, to reset the, the whole clock system. So we're just gonna take an output from this block here and yeah, bring this to the nether hub. I guess I have to remove some uh, bedrock because the other observer line that I built to turn on the quarry from the, from the corner uh, is actually outside of the loaded area. No, actually it's inside. Yeah, I can use it. So I'll just make a line going into the opposite direction and I'll take it from there. Okay, I brought up the signal here with the second observer tower. It was a wise decision to make a 3x3 bedrock hole. Um, yeah, and now as long as we are inside of this hopper loaded grid, uh, we can even use normal repeaters. So since we are sure that it doesn't unload, don't need to worry about junk unloading. So we can use normal repeaters instead. Yeah, and now I have to make a line going from the quarry area to the nether hub, which is actually 4,000 blocks so with 2,000 minus 2,000. And now we have to go to about 2020. <laughs> it took quite a while, but I finally arrived at the nether hub. I didn't want to bring the uh, redstone dust line too close to the nice up because it doesn't look that great to be honest. So I made a little hole in the bedrock here and yeah, in order to cover the last 200 meters I made a little tunnel towards the nether hub. So here this is the end of the tunnel. So here directly next to the nether hub. I already prepared a little chunk loading setup. So if I do F3 and G, so you can see those are the two chunks. This one and the next one, where the sound segment is placed located in, so it's directly under this piston bolt here. Um, yeah, I need the, this chunk loading setup, um, so um, because the sound segment display still needs a few seconds to process the signal, and if it would get unloaded while that happens, that it would also yeah, break it. So that's what I need to make sure those, those chunks are loaded. So this will be the display. I'm a little bit annoyed that it's actually off-centered. So I'm not sure what to do with this block here. Uh, I said here we will build the elevator. Also I'm not sure if I maybe should move this one to the back. Hmm. But yeah, I guess it would also not improve it a lot. Okay, so I still need to build up the part in the back here. So I guess I'll make a little time-lapse. <laughs>
the logic for the counter has been completely built up now. By the way, if you're interested in building something similar, I made a tutorial a while ago. You can find a link in the description. And you can also try this out. So by activating this line here at the bottom, you should decrease the score by one. So from 476, you should go to 475 and so on. I can also uh, trigger the other digits individually. I just need to power those droppers. So I should go from uh, four to three and so on. Now I need to adjust the correct value. So I think by now we are at layer 69. Um, so I need to activate this three more times and yeah, I'll just activate this line six more times then we are at 69. And there's also a reset option, so if I want to use this again for something else, I just need to power this, re uh, this repeater input, then it would reset to 999. So if you ever build a second query or want to use it for something else, uh, it's totally an option. Okay, the last thing you need to do is yeah, hook up the line, which is yeah, above the piston bolt there, to the input line here. And um, yeah, I need to also need to do some logic at the, uh, whoops, what's that? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> and I also need to uh, do some logic at the query still. I need to um, yeah, lengthen the signal so the uh, instant repeater would work correctly. All right, so the query is now directly connected to the seven segment display. Let's just use some uh, observers, stores, and rails to connect it to the input line. I also needed to yeah, increase the little chunk loading grid because actually part of the uh, seven segment display counter were outside of the chunks that I wanted to load. So you can see, I also need to load uh, those additional chunks. So we have uh, four chunks loaded in total now. For now, my work is done here. So I need to head back over to the quarry and put in a pulse extender in front of the instant repeater. And then we can also try it out if it works correctly. So remember 75, I want to activate a few more times and then we'll see if that, this works. So I'm back at the quarry. This was the observer tower coming from the clock. And now we have to put in a pulse extender. So I'll just remove this redstone block here. So normal pulse extender, brought some comparators and some dust. And I think about yeah, eight seconds or nine seconds would be enough. So actually I need to, first I need to extend the signal here with the repeater. And actually six seconds is also enough, yeah. I'll go for six seconds, so another block here. And dust and repeater. So this should keep the instant repeater line powered for six seconds. Okay, as I said, I also want to try it out. So let's activate this three times. One. Okay, this takes a while, and then the instant repeater line starts. Two. Oh yeah, cool down, of course. Okay, I'll activate it three more times and then we head back over to the NASA hub. Back in the NASA hub, so again, a moment of truth. Activated it three times. Let's see if we went to 72. And I lost orientation. <laughs> uh, should be in this corner. Okay, 72, perfect. Okay. Um, we're actually at 70, so I'm gonna activate it two more times here, and I start the quarry back up. And from now on, we're informed at which layer the quarry is the moment working on. Awesome. All right. So the next thing I want to work on is the end dimension, because we actually want to fight the Ender Dragon now. Uh, we haven't fought the dragon since 1.8, so we defeated the initial dragon, and we haven't resummoned him since. So we don't have any end gates. We don't have any dragon's breath, and we want to change that at some point, of course. So we need to prepare the end dimension. Um, back in 1.8, when it yeah, wasn't foreseeable that you could resummon the Ender Dragon at some point, we built a lot of farms at the End Island. So whoa, what's going on with those Endermen? I think we should make this bombproof. <laughs> um, yeah, so we built a lot of farms there. So we had a actually we had two tree farms here, a cobblestone farm. Then, and the items or blocks were broken by two wizards we had in the um, yeah, end portal, which since then have been removed. So yeah, what, what we need to do is now is remove all the storages. We've already started there. So we, we had a log storage, um, a cobblestone storage. Downstairs we had a villager training hall. So we produced emeralds in the end dimension. 
which got traded into redstone, which is actually the fastest way to, to gather redstone. Um, and yeah, so we need to make sure that we bring all uh, all the items over, because the uh, Ender Dragon, of course, might destroy parts of the buildings here by flying through them. Um, yeah, what we also want to do, Methods is already starting on it, is removing the old obsidian pillars, because they're just not that, that nice to look at. Back in 1.8, at some point we also had an obsidian farm once, uh, where some wizards escaped, destroyed some yeah, and, uh, obsidian pillars partially. So we just want to remove the old ones. Uh, of course, the new ones will be generated here in, in the end dimension, which reach down to uh, the, um, yeah, basically no bedrock level, but the, the void level, so by zero. We have a hopper chunk loading grid at the bottom, which will be partially damaged. We also yeah, want to move some hoppers so they, to, to avoid that. Yeah, and it's just some work we have to do now and end. Now. Alrighty, that took a while. So I cleared out the complete uh, villager trading setup we built back in 1.8. This was for clerics. We traded emeralds mostly into redstone, but also got some lapis, glowstone blocks, XP bottles, and ender eyes, which we used to unlock the trades again. And all the chests have been mostly filled, so this was a, a lot of work. Also, I, we cleared the rest of the tree farm storages and the stone storage. Just have to get back up there. Okay. So the chests here on the side have been removed, and here we had uh, stone storage. We brought most of it over to the main storage. So there's still the furnace array left. Um, Probably let the coal, which is still in there, despawn. Yeah, it's not like we don't have a lot of coal anyway. Okay, we also removed the obsidian pillars. Methods did most of the work. Also, meanwhile, we summoned the dragon again. So we got the new pillars. The old pillars have been removed. At some point, probably also gonna remove the new pillars once we've fought the dragon enough. All right. To end the episode, I'll go for another mining challenge. So like last time, I'll try to gather as many diamonds as possible in 60 minutes. But I also pick up some lapis lazuli or on the way if I find some. Uh, but I won't care about redstone, iron and gold ore. Those are not really useful for us, at least by now. Um, yeah, so I also want to yeah, make a comparison. What's the best way to gather diamonds? So uh, last time I just tried normal cave and strip mining. But this time I'm using some TNT as well. So I'm gonna make strip mines, which are 100, 200 blocks long, straight ones. And then, once I'm done with that, I'll use TNT to widen the area. So the more blocks you uncover, the higher is the chance that you would find some diamond ore. Um, so that's the strategy this time. I uh, brought a light source from offhand because we have uh, block lighting uh, for Optifine enabled, so I don't need to bring torches. So I mined approximately 200 blocks in that direction, and now let's start the TNT section. So I'll place the TNT block every second block, and I hope I'll yeah, uncover some diamond ore. Let's see if that's successful. Yeah, first diamond ore uncovered, great. Yeah, I should also mention that TNT for us is not really expensive for a good creeper farm and uh, I sent you per and a crafting script. It's quite easy to gather lots of TNT. And here are the results of today's mining session. So I got 95 diamond ore, two diamonds, those came from the explosions, then 65 lapis ore and 31 emerald ore because I mostly mined in an extreme hills biome. So if you would use fortune on the diamond ore, you could expect 208.8 diamonds. So that's what I got in one hour. I think it's quite okay. Um, and yeah, my opinion it helped a lot to use the TNT. You can definitely notice a difference. So last time I got 118 diamonds power. Methods has also been strip mining. Uh, he got 158 with the same strategy, so without the TNT, and I think the TNT actually makes a difference. So if you have TNT lying around and you want to go uh, strip mining, and yeah, might be a, uh, something you could try out. Okay, so thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.